Hey y'all, this is my iPod 5th gen, it's a 30 gigabyte slim case, and I've put a 5.0 Bluetooth transmitter in it. I decided I was going to do this mod, since you know it looked kind of fun, and I thought, wouldn't it be funny just to put Bluetooth in an old iPod from like 2005? I looked around the internet and I saw that there were a few guides out there actually, but they all seemed to either cannibalize the headphone jack or drill holes into the back casing or use the thick 80 gigabyte case, and I didn't want to do that. So, I remedied this issue by simply just wiring up the transmitter to my hold switch. I personally have lost uh, the functionality of my hold switch, though you can actually use the faceplate buttons and I'll show you a way to do that. This is just a quick little video of the iPod working so you can see that it in fact transmits Bluetooth signals to my headphones. And I'll go through the process of building it in a sec. Let's cover some materials. First and foremost, I use a 30 gigabyte 5th gen iPod back from 2005. I also use a ZIF to compact flash adapter and a compact flash to SD adapter in order to remove the need for a mechanical spinning hard drive. This new solid state storage gave me more room to fit my transmitter inside the slim 30 gigabyte housing. As for Bluetooth, I used a Tautronics transmitter, which I'll link in the description. As for the quality of the transmitter, it's above average for the price and has nearly no noticeable static at louder volumes, though it suffers from some hum at low volumes which may be due to me not isolating it from the electrical components of the iPod properly. So, the first step is to open the iPod to install the solid state flash mod to make room for the Bluetooth transmitter. To open the iPod, I use metal pry tools meant for phones. You can find these online or use a guitar pick. Here, I start working my way around the long edge of the iPod. Be careful when doing this so that you don't snap the little clips that hold the iPod together. Once the clips have been released, disconnect the battery cable from the bottom of the logic board and fold the iPod open like a book. Now let's disconnect this old mechanical hard drive. Start by flipping it over as I do, and gently lift up the clip holding the ribbon cable. Then pull out the ribbon cable. Try to be gentle with these ribbon cables as they can easily break. Next, to increase the amount of space I had to work with inside of the iPod, I sawed off this top portion of the compact flash adapter as seen here. This is mandatory if you'd like to put the transmitter inside this slim 30 gigabyte case. Next, it was time to set up the Bluetooth controls. On the left you can see what the inside of the hold switch will look like when you remove it from its housing. Simply solder a wire to the center pin and one of the outer pins. We will then wire these to the Bluetooth transmitter to act as a button. It's important that you also sever the ribbon cable for the hold switch from the headphone jack ribbon cable as seen here. Alternatively, you can also use one of the faceplate buttons and leave the hold switch intact. The orange bit on the circuit board here controls the click wheel and the faceplate buttons. The IC is used to control the button inputs. Use a multimeter set to continuity to find out which pin does what. Now with our setup complete, we can move over to the Bluetooth portion of this video.
We can start by opening our Bluetooth transmitter module and removing the battery, as well as the switch and the aux cord along with any other unnecessary components. Now it's time to solder on the power leads for the transmitter. These leads will be attached to this capacitor on the logic board. The audio outputs are on these reddish capacitors which are labeled on the picture. Don't forget to solder your hold switch onto your transmitter. Now that everything is soldered, you can play around with the placement of everything and eventually tape everything down to keep it in place and to insulate it. It's now a good time to test the unit before closing it. Closing the iPod is easy. All you have to do is snap it back together. Be sure not to force the iPod shut as it will likely break.